Hey guys, it's that time of year again with the long Super Rugby season ahead. I'm here with Ryan Frieda and we're going to look ahead to the two main games that will kick things off on Saturday. The main match obviously is the Lions versus the Sharks and yeah, um, big win. Yeah, probably the, the main talking point that uh, we're going to have a look at is the, the debate Kerwin Bosch versus Rob Dupree in that number 10 jersey. Uh, I think just from, from our point of view, I think in that last year's Curry Cup final, I think Rob Dupree proved that he is the better all-round yeah, fly half. I think defensively he's a, definitely a better player okay. and, a, and a stronger kicking game, which I just think the Sharks have clearly gone safer bets reliable fly half to kick things off, which is probably the way to go at the start of your campaign. Right, right. I think I think um, you wouldn't have moved to the Sharks if he, if he didn't have certain assurances about his role there. I mean, he was doing really well at the Stormers in Western Province, um, most likely to be there down on 10 this season. So there would have been some assurances there. I'm not implying that he's, he's there done in any favours because I think he's a superior player. Look, I, I don't think, I don't think Bosch, um, He's quite, he's quite there at the moment. Um, there's legitimate concerns around his, around his defence. I think he has made some improvements on that front, but, uh, but I think conditioning-wise, he's going to have to get bigger and stronger if he really wants to have a long and successful career um, in South Africa and with the Sharks or whatever franchise he's playing at. Overall, I agree with you. I think, I think, uh, I think Dupree is a better all-round player. Um, I mean, if, you, if you're comparing them um, in a Super Rugby context in terms of the key performance areas that you need for success, Dupree is ticking more boxes for me than Bosch. And, I, and that's really where we are at this point. Don't get me wrong, Bosch is a great attacking player. I really like um, aspects of what he does in attack. Yeah. But at this point, Dupree for me. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think the fly-off battle will be very interesting. But um, it's also worth noting that it, uh, it's a rematch of last year's quarterfinal. And uh, in, in that one, the, you know, the Sharks really threw the Lions off their game with their pack fronting up and their defence was really outstanding. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of made the Lions look a little bit uh, you know, weaker than, than they had been all um, season. The Sharks were very unlucky to lose. And I yeah. think, again, it'll be a similar template for the first game up. Stick to those um, strengths that we know the Sharks have with their, their forwards and, and that defence and maybe to try and go that route. Uh, for me, I don't quite have the courage just to back the Sharks. Uh, at Ellis Park, and I think maybe the Lions will edge it five to ten points. I mean, that's my prediction. I don't know where you're at. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the Lions by seven at this point. I don't think the Sharks are going to get steamrolled in any key discipline um, of forward play. I think the defining facet of this game is going to be the game line, um, particularly because it's early on in the season, and that's kind of the most predictable aspect of the game um, at this point, yeah. um, just because the guys are still have rest and they're trying to work through that. So I think that's where the game in the forward department will be won and lost, and I think the Lions just edge them there. Yeah. Um, I think another defining um, facet of the game is going to be goal kicking. And if you look at those two, the game line and goal kicking, I think the Lions edge it in both departments. Um, so I see them coming out by seven. It's not going to be pretty, yeah. um, but I think they will start the season off with a win. Yeah, very interesting to see, um, see they named their team without a recognised uh, backup scrum off. But I think let's move on to look at the other the big game, uh, Stormers and uh, the, the Jaguars. Um, yeah, <laughs> here we go again. Um, I think, you know, just the Jags have been really disappointing. I, I think you might agree just in terms of the way they've performed since joining the competition. But then looking at the Stormers and you can't, you know, really overlook that playoff record that's been so poor for them. They've lost uh, eight out of nine playoffs since the, the tournament's inception. And we, here we go again, can they change that? It's probably hanging over their heads and a real question mark. You know, I think they've got a decent uh, settled uh, squad, but they're definitely going to miss Ivan up, uh, you know, for the first few weeks. And that's yeah. probably going to be a bit of a problem area for them. Uh, I think they probably should have enough to beat the Jags first up, but I think uh, you know I'm, I'm a little bit unsure of what to, quite to, to make with them for the rest of the, the campaign. I think for this game I'm going 10 to 15 points, they're going to win it. Um, I don't know where you see maybe the game heading. Yeah, well, you're unsure, I'm certain. So, uh, so I've, I've dubbed the, the Storm as the beautiful letdowns of this particular tournament because there's been numerous occasions, like you mentioned the record, where they've, uh, where they've looked spectacular and gone on runs um, in the tournament where people have them speaking about them being real, um, not only playoff contenders, but actual title contenders. And we've seen how that, that has ended. So I ask myself, what is different to last year? Have they recruited any superstar players that are going that, that, that to elevate the, the, the level the Stormers play at? No, they've recruited um, Raymond Rule um, in, in a roster that already has, uh, that's already laden with wings. I don't think they needed him. Um, have they improved in the coaching front? No, Robbie Flick is the same coach that he's always been. So, so I, you know, I look at it again and go, 
the nucleus of that squad is really talented. I think they've, I think they've got a really good nucleus of, of young players and some seasoned oaks in there. Um, a player like for, uh, like for me, a player like Damien Valencia is an exceptional talent. I think if he is in the right environment, can develop into a really important um, player for the Stormers. Yeah. But I mean, under the current circumstances, no. I don't. You know, I see him going sort of the same same uh, direction as some of the other Stormers flyers that have come through. Like really, you know, started out as a promising player, and the careers have kind of just fizzled out. So if I was Damien Willems, I'd be considering my future even now. I don't see any um, sense of optimism for, for the Stormers or their supporters. Look, they'll fill out the stadiums, it'll be a great chaos at the, at the grounds, and they'll beat a couple of teams like the Jaguaris, who also agree they'll do by I think they'll do them by 15 to 20 at home, um, just because they, they're hopeless, um, especially on the road. So, so there'll be that, that feel-good factor of them beating um, the Argentinians here, um, and then um, people will start to talk about them as real title contenders, but it's really all fluff. It'll, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Which will be interesting. Well, thanks very much, Ryan, and thanks, guys, and enjoy the rugby, and we'll be back. Cheers.